Hey, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, kombucha. I got this really cool kombucha making kit from Kilner. Um, you can check it out online at um, kilnerjar.co.uk and I've got some links down below if you want to grab one on Amazon. But what they've done is taken one of their uh, three liter Kilner jars, fitted it with a spigot and some uh, silicone seals so that you can literally do your continuous brew kombucha in this jar and then put the little wooden cap on it and put it out for your guests and they can decant a little bit of uh, kombucha for themselves and uh, enjoy your kombucha. What I'm looking to do here with this whole thing is make kombucha in this jar. As you know, kombucha is a, a fermented sweet tea. So what we're going to do is make a sweet black tea, add some kombucha to it, you need to start it, you need to culture it. You need to add the symbiotic colony of, of bacteria and yeast, the SCOBY, to your sweet tea to get it to ferment. Wait about a week, two weeks, depending on how sour you like it. And then you'll have what was, you know, a, a, a half a, uh, what was a pint of kombucha is now three liters of kombucha. So, it sounds kind of complicated, I know, but it's really not. It's really, it's not rocket science. Let me show you how simple this is. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to make some black tea. I've got, I don't know what, half a liter of boiling water, five tea bags, and we'll just let this sit for about 15 minutes. I've got sugar here. We're, yes, we're going to make a probiotic beverage that's loaded with sugar. We're not going to eat all that. We're not going to consume all this sugar. This is going to get eaten up by the bacteria and yeast. We're, gonna, we're basically feeding the bacteria and yeast this sugar. So we'll dissolve uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar in our uh, tea mix here. And we'll just let this sit. I want to make a nice strong tea. And this, is, this isn't decaf tea. This is, you know, full black tea. So I'll just let this sit to brew. Um, give this about 15 minutes. I want to make a nice strong tea. I've got my sugar in there. I've got my tea bags and my boiling water. Let's give this about 15 minutes and we'll come back. All right, so now once your, uh, your tea has been brewing, what we want to do is cool this off and get it in, the, in our kilner jar here. So I like to just dump in a bunch of ice. So what I'm shooting for here is two and a half quarts of tea. Uh, half a quart of commercial kombucha, and that'll give me the full three quarts, or the, to fill up my three liter jar. So we've basically, we've made, made our tea, chilled it with the ice, filled, topped it up with water. Now we can go ahead and fill up our killer jar with our iced tea mixture. It is literally iced tea with all those, uh, the ice cubes we dumped in there. Don't need the tea bags, thank you. Leave those behind. And then our culture, we're going to add our, our com commercial kombucha here. That's the culture. Don't worry about, you know, the ice will melt. This is going to sit for, like I said, about a week. So let the ice melt, it'll be fine. So now when you're doing kombucha, you need to leave this open. You need, this is a, this needs to have access to oxygen. This is an aerobic ferment. There needs to be airflow in and out of the jar. Not like some of the lacto ferments that we've done on this channel where you put the airlock on or seal it up or put a plastic bag on top of it. We need to keep this open. And Kilner's actually sent along some little muslin claws with the kit that you can uh, tie on there. They've sent along some kitchen twine that you can um, just snip off a little bit of twine, tie this right on here so it stays, and we're done for the time being. In a week or two, this should be one jar full of kombucha. So we'll let this sit. I'll come back to you guys, and uh, we'll see where we are in a week. So it's been two days, and I just want to show you the progress here, and we've got this growing in it, which looks horrible, which is just dead yeast, basically. It's just a bunch of um, cellulose and dead yeast cells that have kind of coagulated and are floating in our, what will hopefully be our delicious kombucha. But this is completely normal. If you get this, that's a good thing. You're happy. This is, this is honestly where you're going with this. This will eventually sink and it will start to get a little bit of uh, the cellulose disc growing at the top here that people refer to as the SCOBY. 
But when you see something like this growing in your kilner jar, don't give up. This is, this is a good sign. Let the kombucha do what it's gonna do. Let, we'll keep going with this. And in a couple of days, we should have a little bit more growth. So let's put this back where it was, let it continue to do its thing, and we'll check it in a couple of days. And then, depending on conditions in your house, you know, what temperature things are, um, how active the bottle of kombucha that you use to culture it, you should get some kombucha. Uh, yeah, it's, this was probably, I think, this has been about two weeks I was letting this sit in my, I leave mine in my laundry room just because it's warm in there. But you can take the little thing off and you'll see, well here, let me pull the camera up. And you'll see, you should have grown a scoby. I just washed my hands. Um, but here's my little, my little baby scoby that I grew in my kilner jar. Um, nothing, nothing to write home about. It looks a little, this is gross. Remember that, um, that yeast blob that was growing? Well, here it is. And it is just literally, just kind of like the consistency of mud. It's dead yeast cells. Um, they're good for you. Actually, there's a lot of B12 in this, so stir this back in. Um, honestly, uh, it, it's, it's good for you. So, save this. This is, you know, this and the kombucha itself is your new culture. But it's all, it's basically, it's all about taste. T keep tasting your kombucha. Grab one of the supplied Kilner uh, kombucha mugs and give it a little taste. Pour a little off, pour it over some ice, it's kind of not great warm, and taste it. Just keep tasting it every couple of days, taste it. And decide, hmm, hey, that's kind of good, or gee, kind of tastes really sweet, like somebody dumped a bottle of bad kombucha into this. You'll know, you'll, you'll taste that progression, you'll get a feeling for what you're making in your kilner jar. And once you got it so you like it, fill up a mug, fill up two mugs, there's two mugs in the kit, and um, in enjoy this with friends. Or, for an added treat, you're saving your old kombucha bottles, right? You can take an old, a, one of your kombucha bottles, I peel the labels off, pour boiling water into them, and then you can peel the labels right off. Uh, run them through the dishwasher, get them good and clean. You don't have to sterilize them, but get, get them good and clean. I like to go with maybe two inches of juice. This is apple juice. This is uh, organic apple juice that I bought at the farmer's market. You can use, um, naked juices are good. You can use um, other kinds of juice from the, you know, that you find in the refrigerator at the supermarket because there's no preservatives in them. If you put preservatives in your juice, pour your kombucha on top of it, this isn't gonna work. But if you take non-preservative laden juice and a kombucha bottle, or any kind of a good sturdy, a good sturdy bottle, maybe one of those uh, bale top bottles, and Fill your bottles with about a quarter juice and then three quarters of your fresh kombucha. Fill your jar right to the top here. Leave, I've got a half an inch of airspace in there. I don't want a lot of airspace because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seal this bottle up and let this ferment for another two, three, four days. And what's gonna happen is the kombucha is going to ferment that little bit of sugar that was in the apple juice and carbonate this and make a really delicious uh, kombucha drink. So let this go for maybe three, four days. Stick it in the fridge before you open it. Don't open it warm or it'll be everywhere, trust me. But let it ferment for a couple of days, refrigerate it, and then go ahead and pour it off and drink it. And I think you'll really like it. Now, what are we gonna do? I said at the beginning of the video, we're gonna do continuous batch brewing. What does that mean? What I'm gonna do with the rest of my jar here is I'm going to fill up my kombucha bottles with my apple juice and kombucha and save, I don't know, maybe that much. Remember when we first made this, how we poured the bottle of kombucha in? We're essentially going to do that same thing. I'm going to leave my scoby sitting in the bottom. I don't care if it floats or sinks. It doesn't concern me. But I'm going to save about this much kombucha and then I'm going to refill the jar with tea. That same recipe we made. Uh, two and a half liters of water, three quarters of a cup of sugar, five tea bags, and then uh, pour that in and let it go for another week or two and then enjoy kombucha again. While this is brewing, I've got these little guys that I can be enjoying out of the refrigerator all week and by the time these are gone, this is ready to go again and I've got lifelong kombucha. So there, now once you've got your 
couple of bottles of kombucha ready to second second ferment it's called because we did our primary fermentation in the kilner jar we're doing our secondary fermentation with a little bit of added sugar that juice and then our fresh kombucha so I'll just let these put these off to the side I'll probably start drinking them in a couple of days now I've got remember we saw this picture a couple of weeks ago right we've got our culture we've got our existing kombucha to which we're going to add once again two and a half quarts of sweet tea remember the recipe it was three or four tea bags four or five whatever you like three quarters of a cup of sugar and brew it and um let it cool off don't put hot tea on your active cultures in here you'll kill them this has been sitting out for a little while so this is cool now but i'll just go ahead and top up my jar and put our little dust cloth on here to keep the dust and the flies out so that you really need to keep something on top i mean killer ships this real pretty uh, decorative disc that you can put on you know you put this out for a party you don't really want this thing sitting on there so you, they give you this neat little uh, wooden disc that acts like like a real decorative lid while you're drinking your kombucha with your friends but for brewing you want to take this off and and, and get the breathable cloth back on there and this is ready to go. This, we're set. We, we've got our production routine down now, right? We um, take this much kombucha, add two and a half quarts of sweet tea to it, let it sit for a week or two, and then either drink it or fill some bottles and do a, a secondary fermentation. And that's it. That's all there is to kombucha making. It's so simple. The hardest thing is getting, you know, the initial culture going, getting, you know, and, you know, you don't really have to form a SCOBY. You don't have to get a SCOBY. I think everyone puts too much importance on that. You know, it really, the culture, the SCOBY itself is in the beverage, is in the stuff that you are saving. So, you know, don't worry if you can't get a SCOBY. I mean, if you have a friend that gives you one, that's awesome. Go ahead and, and dive right into this project. But if you can't, like I said, you know, just buy a bottle of kombucha and pour it in with your tea and um, enjoy. Enjoy your Kilner Jar Brewing setup. And if you have any questions about anything in this process, leave me a comment below. I, you know, I get them right on my phone and I'm always happy to, uh, to answer anybody's questions about any of this kind of stuff. Subscribe, like the channel, and I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching, everybody.